You're going to begin this experiment by recrystallizing 0.5 grams of orange toluic acid using a two to one mixture of ethanol water. To do this, measure out 0.5 grams of toluic acid into a 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Add a boiling chip and a few pipette squirts of the warm ethanol water mixture to start. Heat this mixture to a gentle boil, otherwise known as reflux, on a hot plate in the fume hood. Once dissolved, remove your solution from the heat and allow it to cool slowly and undisturbed. As with all recrystallizations, you must avoid a large excess of solvent since this will not allow for crystallization to occur. Do not touch or move the Erlenmeyer until the solution is at room temperature. If once cool, no crystals have begun to appear, scratching the inside walls of the flask with a metal spatula will often help induce crystallization. Once the solution has cooled to room temperature and there is some crystal formation, place the beaker into an ice water bath to induce further crystallization. At the same time, cool a flask of 2 to 1 ethanol water mixture in an ice water bath for later use as your rinse solvent. We are going to be using suction filtration to isolate the solid product. To begin setting up our vacuum filtration, we will clamp the safety flask in place. Next, we will connect the thick walled vacuum tubing to the safety flask. One side of this vacuum tubing will be connected to the lab's vacuum system. The other side of the vacuum tubing will be connected to the clamped vacuum filter flask. Here is an overview of the setup so far. Before beginning recrystallization, we will add the neoprene adapter and Buchner funnel to the top of the filter flask. Next, filter paper is placed into the Buchner funnel to catch the solid product. Once the vacuum is turned on, you are ready to recrystallize. Use suction filtration to isolate the solid product and rinse your crystals with ice cold 2 to 1 ethanol water. In order to minimize product loss while rinsing, the solvent for rinsing the crystal should always be the same solvent that was used during the recrystallization, but ice cold. After letting your crystals dry under a vacuum, obtain the melting point of your product and calculate the percentage recovery. To obtain a melting point for your recrystallized product, begin by preparing a sample in a capillary tube. A melting point apparatus can then be used to visualize the melting point of the product. You will now recrystallize 4 amino acetophenone in a suitable solvent. A good recrystallization solvent should be able to dissolve a high quantity of a target substance near the solvent's boiling point, but only a small quantity near 0 degrees Celsius. In other words, the solubility of the substance in the solvent must be high at high temperatures and low at low temperatures. In order to determine which solvent or solvents will work, start with a small amount of 4 amino acetophenone. Place approximately 25 milligrams in a test tube and add one milliliter of solvent. If the compound dissolves in the solvent at room temperature, the solvent is not a good choice for recrystallization. If the compound does not dissolve at room temperature, heat the test tube in a sand bath. If the compound still does not dissolve, the solvent is also not a good choice. If the compound does not dissolve in the solvent at room temperature, but does dissolve upon heating, the final step is to see if the compound will recrystallize or stay in solution upon cooling. To do so, place your test tube in an ice water bath. If crystals appear, you have found a suitable solvent and may move on to the next step. In the next step, you're going to start over. Recrystallize a fresh 0.5 gram amount of 4 amino acetophenone in the determined solvent. Recall that the recrystallization should be done near the boiling point of the solvent, and use either a sand bath or a hot plate to heat your solvent as appropriate. Use suction filtration to isolate the solid product and rinse your crystals with ice cold solvent. 
After letting your crystals dry, obtain the melting point of your product and calculate the percentage recovery.